Hebrews 11 and Genesis chapter 4. And let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. First, Hebrews 11, verse 4, the word of God says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he, being dead, yet speaketh. We're going to Genesis chapter 4 now. We see the contrast here between Cain and Abel. And as I said last week, that there are, some, someone has said that there are nearly 10,000 religions in this world. That's hard to keep, keep uh, track of, is there not? But really, when you boil it all down, there's really only two. Yep. There is Cain and there is Abel. There is faith in the blood and there is faith in your own works. Okay. All right, but what you need to know that all the way back to Genesis chapter 4, God had respect on one, and God did not have respect on the other. We need to understand that there's only one thing that God accepts for the atoning of our sin, and that is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that blood. That washes white as snow. There's no other fount I know. You know why? Because there isn't any. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can for sin atone? Nothing for the blood of Jesus. Amen. We can sing that. And that is so true. And so we just boil it down. Cain and Abel brought offerings to the Lord. I believe both of them were sincere. I believe Cain, although the Bible says here in Genesis, let's, let's read verses 1 through 5 in Genesis chapter 4, Genesis 4 verse 1. And Abel knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord, notice please, had respect unto Abel and his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. Now we remember this is not the first time that mankind had offered the fruit of their own labors as an atonement for their sin. Their own parents, Adam and Eve, after they had sinned in the Garden of Eden, sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Did God say, oh, good job. Good job. That's exactly what I was looking for. No, he did not. What did he do? He took an innocent lamb. He shed the blood of that lamb, and the Bible says that he covered them with coats of skin. Again, the picture of the blood. Again, the picture of the innocent for the guilty. Yeah. And again, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, cursed is the ground. How could it, something atone that's cursed? The ground was cursed. All right? Cain brings of the, of the fruit of the ground. And again, that was cursed. You and I have the curse of sin on us. The Bible says that he took our curse. Amen to that. All right? Yeah. The Bible says cursed is everyone that dieth on a tree. He took our curse. He took our shame. He took our hell. He took our sin. He took our punishment. All right? He took that. He became sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And we see that God accepted Abel's worship and God rejected Cain's worship. And so that's the point number one that we spoke of last week. That there was a contrast in their worship. One worship in spirit and in truth. One tried to atone for his sins by his own efforts, which again will never work. It never has worked. It never will work. And as we took the time last week and the, really the thrust of the message got into showing you place after place after place where God says, it's the blood, it's the blood, it's the blood. From, from there in the Garden of Eden where that animal was shed, from Cain and Abel, from Abraham to Moses to the Old Testament sacrifices, to all of those things, picturing the innocent for the guilty, picturing it is the blood that atones. 
And again, those people, as we look today back to Calvary and we say, yes, back there, back there on that old rugged cross, Jesus died for my sins and he paid for every one of them with his blood. We look back at that. Are you listening in the Old Testament? They looked forward to that. There was faith in a, in, a, in a future coming of the Lord, a, a future offering that was made, a future sacrifice. And know those animals in Hebrews chapter 10 says the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. It was never meant to, to take away sin. It was a picture of what did take away sin. As you and I will tonight, we'll take a, a piece of bread in our hands. It, that does not forgive sin. It pictures what did forgive sin. That broken body. We take that juice in our hands. We'll take that cup of juice. Uh, it, it's not the juice that saves. It pictures what saves. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from sin. We understand that. Either looking back or looking forward, there has only ever been one way. And by the way, we can go, we did last week. I'm not going to go through it all again. But the book of Revelation says that Jesus Christ was slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. Listen, before Adam and Eve were ever created, God knew exactly what he was going to do. It, Calvary was not plan B. Calvary was always plan A. And God does not have a plan B. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. We understand that. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And you go to most people, and let me remind you, Cain was a religious man. Yeah. You go to most religious people today and ask them, if you die today, do you know that you go to heaven? And here's what most of them will say, I hope so. I hope so. Well, why do you hope so? Well, you, here. I, I, I try to live a good life. I, I try to be a good person. I, I go to church. You ever hear people talk that way? They're out there by the millions and it's so sad. And they're thinking, have I done enough? They think that somehow God has a scale. And that they're good. And they're good outweighs their bad. Hey, can I, can I help you with the scale? There's none good. That's a zero with the, the outside edges taken off. There's none righteous. No, not one. There is none good. There is none that seeketh after God. You're not good. I'm not good. He's good. Amen. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is not, there is nothing good in us. It's all the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that paid the price. And friend, Adam, Adam and Eve understood that and Cain and Abel understood that. We talked about last week, and I'm not going to go through the verses, that Abel in Luke chapter 11 was called a prophet of God. The Bible says in the book of Acts 10, 43, that all the prophets gave witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. People say that they understood. They understood perfectly what they do. Cain and Abel both totally understood what they were doing. Cain says, I don't care what God says. I'm not going God's way. I'm going to do it my own effort. I'm bringing my own salvation. I'm going to try to atone for my sins with my own efforts. And God rejected it. Abel brought of that lamb, that precious lamb, lamb that spotless lamb, that sinless lamb. Again, that points to Jesus Christ. And God had an acceptance of that sacrifice. And again, all throughout the word of God, you find that over and over again. We sung about it this morning, about the, the blood that was on uh, the top of the door and on the side post of that door, picturing the cross. And God says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. It was the blood. Notice it was not rubies and diamonds and, and, and gold and silver and good works and baptismal certificates and, and, and offering receipts and any of those and, and, and perfect attendance pins in Sunday school. None of those things can atone. It's only the blood. Even if they would have put a live lamb on that door, that made, he was not, listen, we are not saved by learning lessons from the life of Christ. We receive life from the death of Christ. There had to be the lamb that was shed. There had to be the death of that lamb. The blood had to be shed. And so there's the contrast in worship. Works and the blood. Fruit of your own efforts. Whatever it is. And again, there are church after church after church 
that'll preach that. Unfortunately, there are few, very few that'll preach the religion of Abel only through the blood. Only through the blood. Friend, this is not incidental. This is absolutely fundamental that we understand this. Now, number two this morning, let's get into new ground today. I want you to look at verses five and six, if you would, please. And not only the contrast I see in their worship, but number two, there's the consequences of their worship. Yeah. Hey, can I tell you this morning that whatever you believe will have consequences? Sure. By the way, not just in this life, but for all of eternity. You'd better be right. You'd better be right about this one thing, friend, because this not just affects. Now, here's the thing. Uh, yesterday, I, I had the first donut I've had in a long time. And brother, let me tell you, it was good. Amen. I have learned that when you're 47, you do not lose weight by eating donuts regularly. At least I don't. Now, Terrence can. I won't get that's another message. Terrence, I mean, I, I promise you, Terrence can go to every buffet in this county for every day, and he'd still look just like that. But I'm not mad at Terrence. I'm not bitter about him. Did you know that? But are you listening? That decision yesterday, it was peer pressure. I saw you all eat donuts, so I wanted to be a social eater. But I had that donut yesterday. You know what? That decision did not affect me very much. Right? I mean, uh, I'll be honest with you, I didn't wait this morning. I'm in denial. Amen. But anyways, are you listening? The, this decision is everything. The blood. The consequences of their worship. Look at verses 5 and 6. But unto Cain into his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? Friend, again, God did not have any respect. Think of that. And I believe, listen, I believe Cain had good intentions, don't you? I believe that. I believe that he was sincere. But by the way, friend, you can have good intentions and be wrong. There's millions of people, Brother Drew, going to church today. I believe they're sincere. Yeah. But they're sincerely wrong. You can be sincere that two plus two is five. You can be sincere about that and you're wrong. You can be sincere in your worship. You can be sincere in what you believe. You can be sincere in all that. But listen, it, it will not work. God, listen, will not overlook sin. God will not overlook sin. If he did, he would topple from his throne of holiness. You ever heard someone say this? I just believe God is too good to punish sin. You have it exactly backwards. God is too good not to punish sin. He's too good not to punish sin. Friend, if you could... Sum up God in one word. I believe that one word that you could sum up God in, not that you could adequately, but friend, if you could take only have one word to describe God, I believe it would be the word holy. Yeah. Friend, God never has. God never will overlook sin. And if God overlooks sin, he would topple from his throne of holiness, which is impossible. All sin must be punished. Sin will never be overlooked. We understand that. Turn, with, if you would, please, to Romans chapter 3. We're going to read a familiar verse in verse 23, but we're going to keep reading. I want you to hurt. turn there, if you would, please. Romans chapter 3. I want you to see some things from the Word of God this morning. Notice what God did about sin. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. A familiar verse, but I want you to think about it for just a second. Where it says, For all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. By the way, look at that verse. I believe that is a wonderful description there in verse 23 of what sin is. Yeah. All have sinned. Now listen, here's the definition of sin. And come short of the glory of God. Here's where God is. Here's where we are. You know what that gap is between? Sin. Sin is falling short of the glory of God. All right, and by the way, that gap is far bigger than most people want to admit. Most people think the gap is like this. No, friend, I don't have arms big enough to show you how big that gap is. Right. You see, people are grossly ignorant of two things, how holy God is and how sinful they are. Because when you realize how holy God is, then you realize how sinful you are. Read Isaiah, not today, right, not right now, but read over there in Isaiah chapter 6, where Isaiah saw the holiness of God. 
Yeah. You remember what he said? Woe is me. Woe is me. He, by the way, he didn't say wow is me. You get on Facebook today and Twitter, you're going to find a lot of people saying wow is me. Boy, am I great. Boy, am I good. You know what they got? They got their eyes on themselves. They got their eyes on the Lord, that's for sure. Because one indication you have your eyes on the Lord, you're saying, wow. And woe is me. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. To come short of the glory of God, that gap between the glory of God and us is sin. What did God do about it? Verse 24 of Romans 3. Being justified. <laughs> Don't you like that word? Justified. Never were even a sinner. How? Freely. How? By his grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The word redemption means to buy back. To purchase. To make that purchase. All right? To redeem us. That is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. Notice how? Through faith in his blood. Yeah. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just. And the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Boy, I can preach a month of Sundays on those verses. Amen. What, what verses of scripture? How, how are we redeemed? How are we made right? Listen, through the blood. The word propitiation, that's a word we don't use very much. It just means satisfaction. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 that he saw the travail of his soul and was satisfied. What satisfied the wrath of God for Brian Lott's sin? It was the blood. What was the what had satisfied the, the wrath of God for Rick McDivitt's sin? It was the blood. It was the blood. What was it that satisfied the wrath of God for your sin? It's the blood of Jesus Christ. He is the satisfaction, verse 24. Through his blood, verse 25. He is the propitiation through his blood to declare his righteousness. For the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Listen. And then verse 26 says that he is the just and the justifier. Listen. He is just in saying I am guilty. He is just in saying I am a sinner. He is just in looking at me and saying, Brian Lott, you deserve hell. God is just in saying that, brother. Because you know what? I am guilty. Yeah. I am guilty. I am guilty by birth. I am guilty by commission. I'm guilty, I, I listen, at all counts. But aren't you glad the verse doesn't yeah. say that God is just? Doesn't stop there. Amen. He is just and justifiable. So here's what he says You're guilty. You deserve to die. You deserve the wrath of God. Whew. Glory. Glory to God. Not only am I just in saying that, <laughs> I'll take your place. Yeah. I'm the justifier. How did he pay the price? Are you listening? Through his blood. Yeah. What an insult. What an insult to think that I can pay for my sins with my own efforts. Friend, if I allowed my son to die for you, to die in your place, and you lived, because I butchered my son to, to live for you. And you go around the whole community and say, you know what? I'm here today because I had five bucks in my pocket. You think I would break my heart? I gave my son that you could live. And you get up in a church service or anywhere else and say, really, I know Evan died and he got butchered on the cross, but really what saved me was the five bucks I had in my pocket. How that must break the heart of God. How that must break the heart of God. That churches and religious people, and let's remind ourselves, Satan is not against religion. He's up those eyeballs in it. It's his chief tool. The greatest deception of all is religious deception. 
Again, I said last week, America does not need, need more religion. We need, to re, we need to repent of our religion and turn to Jesus. Yeah. How that must break the heart of God. That God allowed his son to be butchered on an old rugged cross like we have a picture of there. Oh, what's taking you to heaven? I'm a good person. What? I've been baptized. What? I go to church. That's taking you to heaven? Question, real good one. Then why did Jesus die? Right. Honestly, if you come up to me, and again, I don't love you enough to give, your son, to give my son for you. You don't love me enough to give your child for me. Now, we understand that. But let's say we could. And let's say there's two choices. That you can either give, give your son, brother, brother, for you to live. Either Evan will die or you can give the five bucks that's in your pocket. I'm sorry, brother. Let's give the five bucks in your pocket. Yeah. Amen? If we can go to heaven by being baptized, then why did Jesus die? If we can go to go to heaven by, by, by joining a church, then why did Jesus die? If we can go to heaven by keeping the Ten Commandments, then why did Jesus die? I'll tell you why he died. Because we're sinners. Yeah. Yeah. Cannot save ourselves. He's the propitiation. He's the satisfaction. He is just and the justifier. He's the one that died for us. He's the one that redeemed us through his blood. Friend, I'm going to tell you this morning, God has never let sin go unpunished. Your sin, your individual sin, one of two things is going to happen with it. You ready? In your choice. It'll either be pardoned in Christ or it'll be punished in hell, but it will not be overlooked. That's your choice. You either with your sin allow God to pardon you, or you allow God to punish you. If you receive his gift of salvation, whew, the pardon. But if you reject him, there's punishment. There will be payment for your sin. Understand that. There will be payment for our sin, all right? It'll either be pardoned in Christ or punished in hell, but it will not be overlooked. And again, the consequences of this, friend, are not your choice at the salad bar this afternoon. The consequences of this choice is for all of eternity. You see, Cain today is burning in hell. Abel's in heaven. The Bible says in Hebrews, where we just read, that he being dead yet speaketh. I have no doubt he received the martyr's crown. I have zero doubt that one day I'm going to walk up to him and introduce myself to him. Amen. Abel was killed by Cain, but he did not cease to exist. Let me remind you this morning that for the child of God, Death is not a period. Death is a comma. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. My dad, a little over two years ago, went to glory. That wasn't a period. That was a comma. Mm -hmm. Bob Lott was born July 10th, 1945. He lived 70, help me with my math, mom, 74 years. And he died September 26, 2019. Comma. And he's in heaven for all of eternity. Amen. Number three, the contrast, the consequences. But I notice here in Genesis chapter four, the conflict of their worship. The Bible says in Genesis four, old Cain got mad. Cain got mad. The Bible says he was wroth, very wroth. Very wroth. By the way, you give the gospel to people, they may get mad. Hmm? They may get mad. How many of you ever had somebody get mad at you? Remember Brother Tim? How many of you ever had somebody get mad at you for telling them the truth of the gospel? Genesis 4, look at verse 5. But unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? 
If thou doest well, thou shalt not shalt thou not be accepted. Mm -hmm. huh? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. Notice now, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. The first murder was over religion. Can I remind you this morning that it was a religious crowd that crucified Jesus? Interesting, isn't it? I read in my Bible, Brother Drew, that the publicans and the sinners received him gladly. Now, I'm, I'm well aware that my sin was on Jesus. I get all of that. But who was, who, was, who was the most adamant against Jesus when he was on this earth? Answer, religious people. Yeah. Was. Absolutely. Religious people. Read your Bible. Read the gospel. It was a religious crowd, all right? It, Cain killed Abel. You know what? He was mad at his, he was not right with his brother because he was not right with God. See, that's the way it works. I can't be right with my brother if I'm not right with God. If I'm right with God, then I will be right with my brother. You see, his real problem. Cain's real problem was not Abel. Cain's real problem was with God. Can I remind us this morning that false religion is always characterized by force. True religion is characterized by love. The Muslims force their way. It's a religion of force. Friend, we have no idea how much blood is on the hand of of denominations that call themselves Catholic and Presbyterian, to name two. Yeah. Amen. Millions. A religion of force. A religion of force. Many have paid the price to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ with their blood. Interesting, Cain perhaps was too refined to offer a blood sacrifice. Interesting though, he wasn't too refined to stick a knife or whatever he used to plunge and kill his own brother. Turn me, if you would, toward turning to the Gospel of John, chapter 16. I remind you as we turn to John 16, there's no fine print in the contract of following Jesus Christ. Jesus said very plainly, they hated me. And Jesus said very plainly, they will hate you. There's no fine print of contract. We should not be surprised when this world does not want to hear the message of the blood of Jesus Christ. We should not be surprised at all that, that, that our family members sometimes would not hear this message and not like to hear that message. John chapter 16 and verse number 1. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. Verse 2, John 16. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, notice the time cometh. That whosoever killeth you will think he hath that he doeth God's service. That sound familiar? How many people are, 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 I mean, Christians are being murdered. You know why? They think they're doing it in the name of God. Yeah. Hey, the Muslims think they're, they're religious by doing this. They're actually being true to their religion and other religions. They think they're doing God's service. Verse 3, and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. I want to invite you this morning to come to Jesus Christ and receive him as your Savior if you never have. But I will say this, your coming to Jesus Christ today may cost you your life. If you don't think that if Jesus tarries his coming, if you don't think that's coming to America, you're grossly naive. Right. You say that I won't come then. Your choice. Your choice. But I will remind you, Jesus said, he that is ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of him. It's interesting, the word martyr and the word witness are the same word in the Greek language. Yeah. Huh. yeah. You see, death doesn't make martyrs, it just reveals them. People need the gospel. Gospel through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Cain killed Abel. 
The king was the loser. Abel won the martyr's crown. Again, there's two religions in the world, the true and the false, blood and works. But the difference between the two is heaven and hell. Would you turn your place, hold your place and turn me to Galatians chapter 2, the last verse I'll have you turn to. Galatians chapter 2. And again, if you want to say to me this morning, well, preacher, I believe there's another way than the blood. Then again, the question I have for you is then why did Jesus die? Galatians chapter 2, verse 21, the great verse perhaps underlined in your Bibles. Because the Bible says in Galatians 2, verse 21, Paul said on the inspiration of the Spirit of God, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, doing good, all this and that, if righteousness come by the law, notice, then Christ is dead in vain. Think of that. Yeah. Think of those who preach works salvation. And God says of that, then evidently my death meant nothing. Wow. Think of that. And, and, and you know what they'll say? Well, we're, we're not saying it doesn't mean anything. Yes, you are. Friend, it either means everything or it doesn't mean anything. Amen? It's either, it's either everything or nothing. All right? You can't have it. You can't have it both ways. It's either everything or nothing. Either, either, either what Jesus did paid for it all or it didn't. But it either paid for it all or it didn't pay for anything. Notice, if, if, if salvation can come, if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let me tell you a story. A liberal preacher many years ago was in his study late on a Saturday night. Knock came to the door. The preacher opened the door. And it's a little girl, poorly dressed. You could tell she was very poor, dirty. Dressed very poorly. The preacher said, can I help you? And she says, are you a preacher? He said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a minister. He said, she said, can, I, can you help me? And the minister was thinking, she needs food, she needs shelter, it's cold out that night. He said, what do you need? She said, Here's what she said. She said, can you get mama in? Can you get mama in? The preacher's thinking her mother was drunk and maybe she fell out on the streets and couldn't get up and maybe this girl came and this preacher would help, help her get in the house. She said, is, has your mom fallen down? Is, is, is she, she said, no, she, she's dying. She's afraid of going to hell. Can you help get her in? The preacher grabbed his coat and grabbed his hat and went with her to the house and found the woman there dying. And the woman had excruciating pain in her face. And she looked at him and she said, are you a man of God? She, he said, well, I'm a minister. She said, can you help me get in? And he began to tell her about doing good. He began to tell her about being moral. He began to tell her about the Sermon on the Mount and being kind to others and do good unto others as they do good unto you. And, and, and all these religious platitudes. And she said, sir, that all sounds good. She said, but I'm dying. She said, I don't, I don't have time. I am dying. I do not have time to do all those things. And here's what she said. Don't you have a message for me? Brother Drew, that preacher, loose term. 
realize at that moment he did not have a message for her. But he remembered his old saintly mother. She did have a message. And before he got brainwashed, educated at seminary, he remembered that story of Jesus Christ and how his blood was shed and how the payment was made and how the forgiveness was there through the blood. And he gave her that story of Jesus and his love Amen. and how that she could put her faith and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. He told her what his mama told her. And that man gave a testimony in a church service and here's what he said. He said, that night she got in Amen. and I did too. Amen. Glory. Glory to God. Friend, it's only through the blood. Yeah. It's only through the blood. Yeah. And friend, this world that is crippled by fear needs the message of faith in Jesus Christ. Two religions, two ways. I love that hymn we sung last week, Just As I Am, without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Would you come to Jesus today? Would you do it for your sake? sake. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heads bow. Our eyes are closed.